Yo everyone, welcome back to another video and in today's video we are going to be building another 3D printed jet boat. This one, if you see my previous video for the one I built for Kev, in the actual build files now there is an update and there is a second boat within those files. So if you go back, link in the description for the jet sprint boat that I built, the M-Jet, there are the files in there for that one and also you will get the super sprint. That is what this is. So this comes free with the files. So you get two boats of one. And I think it's about 30 euros, it's cheap if you've got a 3D printer. So we're gonna build this one and see how different it is. And this one looks a lot better, a lot different. And there's a lot of unique upgrades for this one if you wanna do the upgrades also. So let's dive in, have a look what we're gonna do. So with this jet boat, it is slightly different. With the jet sprint, it is two piece hull. With the super sprint, it is a three piece hull. So here we have the rear piece of the hull, we have the center section of the hull, we have the front section of the hull, and then you have this bit, the unique little bit here, you can print this in whatever you like. This is in PLA at the moment. The whole thing is printed in PLA Tough, so it makes it a lot stronger. This is PLA, but you can also print this in TPU. So this is in the front as a bumper. So if you wanted it in TPU as a like bump stop, you can. I haven't with this one, I might do, I might do it in black. Also, we have a spoiler, this one. I've done that, look, so I printed it like that with the Super Sprint logo on the rear. There is a jet, different jet pump for this one. So this one is a single impeller jet pump, so it's completely differently designed. And we have the little fins. These ones, the little fins, these go on the side of the boat here to keep it in a straight line. There is about 10 different ones in the files that you can print, all different lengths to help you turn or keep it more stable. The ride plate again, this is the steering mechanism. This sits on the back of here, which you'll see later when we put it together. And these are, so you get a little radio box as well, which is pretty cool. And it's single impeller as well, which is nice. So you get a single impeller with this one. And there is the motor mount that also incorporates the servo mount there also. So yeah, I haven't printed the pilot yet. They'll come out later on. They're printing at the moment to the pilots and there is a new V8 engine as well that is pretty special. So let's dribble, let's get building. Okay, so if we start for the three piece hole then, we've got each individual bit, as I said, the rear section. So I've already pre-done this. This one has been waterproofed inside because obviously PLA is not waterproof. If you want to do it in ABS, that is fine. ABS is a lot more waterproof, but I had this line around this PLA and I like orange. Also that one here, that has been done. So that's all been sealed and the front section is sealed also. This is what I use again for sealing it. So finishing resin, this tank this gives you about 20 to 30 minutes of playing time or usable time and then three hours. Normally I leave it for about a month. If you want it to go off super, super solid, it takes about a month, but touchable in 24 hours. As with the other boat, you get a full set of instructions with this tells you all the hardware, all the electronics you can use for this. And I'll show you that at the end of the video, everything you need to build this jet boat. But first step, is this, we need to put some buoyancy material in there. So we need to fill that with foam. And that basically, if the boat sinks, that will stop it from completely sinking then. So we need to get that cut and stuck in there. So we just need to trim that down there. Also, what I will say in the instructions, you will get a diagram in the instructions that gives you dimensions and the actual drawings for cutting this out in sections, the perfect size, if you want to do it that way. I just want to do it a bit quicker, so I've cheated and done it like that. First thing we're going to do, do this a little bit backwards. There is a YouTube video for this, but I need to do it a different way because I want to basically, I, I need to reduce the time of building it. So I'm going to basically stick some seals in and then I'm going to glue it together and then I'm going to lacquer the complete outside of it to waterproof it. So. I've got two of these, 
These are basically little rubber seals. There's a spring in there and they're gonna basically water seal the outside of the inside of the hole. And that is basically what your drive shaft will pass through. So there's two of them, uh, one on inside and one on outside. But before anything, same as the other boat we built, you're gonna to need to stick two of these screws into there. So M3 by 40s, and they're gonna be the battery retainers. So there's one there and one there. Obviously if you glue it together, you're never gonna get them in. Just remember guys, it is 3D printed, so don't go at it too hard. Battery retraining straps fitted. And now what we're gonna do, we are going to take the rear piece of the hole. So one of these seals fits in there, in that hole with this spring facing forward. So that'll basically fit in there. It should be quite a tight fit. If it's not, then you could end up having leakage in. So nice and tight that should be. And then you've got one here as well. So it's still one of the bearings as well. These are ceramic bearings. So you don't need to lubricate these because they're all ceramic, so they don't rust. So there'll be one in there and then one in the impeller side. It's fitted in there perfectly. So now the next step is we can basically start gluing it together. So I'm gonna use some 30 minute epoxy for this. Nice. we have it put together. So what I've done, I've used this springy elastic stuff. It's really, really good. Just to hold all three pieces together. So in about half an hour, that'll be cured. And camera on to the next bit. So we also need to do inside there, because there's two little holes down here. They're for the water cooling. So to stick two of these brass tubes in there. A little bit of epoxy. It's a bit epoxy. So again, five vanilla epoxy on here. Try not to drop it, feed that in the hole. So I'm using five mini epoxy. What I should have done was sanded the end of this to get a bit better grip. But hey, if it comes out, I just have to redo it again. But I would advise you guys just to sand that bit, give it a bit more grip for it to uh, purchase onto. So I put that one in there. There we go. So you can see that you've got them two in there now. So I also forgot to mention is this. So this is the plate tray that sits in here. We need to epoxy that in position as well. So, so we've got some five mini epoxy on that, glue that in. Oh, here we go, please. <clears throat> so make sure we put it right away. It's a little tab in the corner here, look. And that goes on that side. So let's get that seated in there. And then leave that alone for five minutes. So here we go. So we've got all three parts of the hole now put together. So next thing I need to do is mask up this point here. And then we're going to apply a few coats of lacquer to the outside of it. So what I've done is masked up the points where I want to keep the spray off of. So they're on the bearings in there. And the rear ceramic bearing in there. So, well, let's go get it painted. Okie dokie, it's the next day and we've let it dry. So this has a few coats of black on it, as you see we put on. Come up really nice. So that is fully sealed now. So that part is done. We have most of the 3D printing done now. There's a few more bits on the printer at the moment. Engine is done, look, the new V8 engine. It's got a supercharger to go on the top of that and all the cables and auxiliaries to go with it. It's gonna look absolutely wicked when it's done. Uh, so all these bits today I've done, these are, this is what comes as well. You get this with the files. You get all full instructions, what you need to do. So you've got your drive shaft, steering shaft, uh, motor mount pin, steering pin, engine slider shaft, that is only if you're gonna, so this unique to this model, it has, uh, you can literally, there's a video, I'll leave a link in the description, where you can use the water power from the jet to open the butterfly valve in the supercharger. And you only need that if you're gonna use it. Also you need five of these out of brass tube, so five of those, 
four mil brass tube. So it's all done there, there for obviously uh, the water cooling. So all the flat spots are done, ready to go in the impeller. The steering shaft is almost complete. It's got to stick a three mil pin in the end. So let's carry on the next bit, get some of these bits installed. So next thing is we need to get some of these threaded inserts into the hole and into the jet unit itself. So using a soldering iron, we're gonna heat these up and push them into the correct places, hopefully. Try to get them in straight, if possible. So this is a servo adapter. So he's put one in there. So this will basically put a screw through then to hold it the shaft in place for the steering. Okay, so that's in there. What I've had with these before though, is with these, they sometimes they push the actual filament through there and blocks the holes. So you might have to stick a drill through there. Okay, so we've got the four in the back. They'll hold the jet pump on, like so. Three on each side here as well. So three of these on each, these hold the side. So three there, three to do on opposite side. Okay, so we've got the three on the other side as well. Okay, now what we need to do, we're using these M5 grub screws, put one in the end of the uh, pump unit itself. So screw one of them in there, dead straight. And funny enough, it has 3D printed the actual thread, but. So I'll probably leave about that much sticking at the end for now, otherwise, because what you don't want to do is coming out the other side. One of them in here also. So one that side and one over there. And that'll be so you can keep your uh, cover attached. Okay, so what we need to do now, we've put another, if you can see down the bottom there, another ceramic bearing. We've pushed that into place. Use something heavy and something flat to gently push that into there. So that's done. If you push this too far, then it'll push the bearing out. So next thing we need to do is a steering rod. So where I've basically put the flat on there, you push it on, again, it's in the instructions, and this end, the actual servo attaches to. So what we also need to do is put that small pin into here. So get that started, and then we're gently gonna use the vise to push it in all the way. Now oh, that went in straight, didn't it, look? Next bit, we need to install the motor mount pins into the motor mounts. They will go in this direction. So there is two in the files. So this one here on the right, as you can see, is a slightly different servo mount. This one is sort of a TR4, what you'll find on a TRX4 diff servo. And this one is for the slightly bigger mini servo. Now I like using mini servo, so I'm gonna use a bigger style one. So there is a spare one if I ever need it. Install these two pins into these holes. Like so. And if you want to make sure they're in there, again, use the vise. So this is the servo we're going to be using for the steering. Lovely little Sandbox waterproof servo. Quite a big torque as well. So this is two kilos you need for this. This is a five kilo fully waterproof digital servo. This is very nice. Now what we need to do now is get the round servo on that came with the servo, and then we need to match it up like so. When you find the holes that it lines up with, drill two two mil holes in there. So what we can do at the same time is we can put the M what we can do at the same time we can put the M3 by 10 to it. As I said, remember it can be a bit tricky, so make sure it goes all the way through. And then all the way back again. And there we go. So what we can do now is also attach the servo. So just secure that with two M2s. Sorry, M3s. Okay, now attach the servo arm onto the servo, making sure it's centered. So keeping that vertical, or as much as you can. And then get a screwdriver and do it up. Servo horn is attached. All right, motor are being attached now to the mount. Easy enough. So the way I'm using, I'm gonna stick with 4S on this one. So 4S, 3660 motor. And this is 2050 kV, this one. So 3060, 20, 2050kV, you can run sickness in this boat, I just didn't want to, I didn't want to make it stupidly quick. So it's so either this motor, 3660, 2150 or 2050kV or a 1400kV for success. And now this time we need to add a 5mm to 5mm motor coupler, or depending on obviously what your shaft size is. So these are good ones, again, cheap off Amazon. So stick one of them on there for now, and then just gently do that up. 
And then we can fully do it up. And we've got to attach to the boat. So now what we're going to do, we're going to stick the spoiler on. So easy enough. So I'm just going to use two and three by tens in the rear, like so. So remember, not too tight. If you're doing them too tight, they won't go on. Stick the M2s in. One in one side. There we go. So that's a spoiler on. So we're going to stick these on the side now as well. M3 by six. Okay, next thing we're doing, uh, water cooling pipes. We're putting them in now. So they they go onto little brass bits in the back there. And what I'm gonna do is stick a couple of little tie wraps around there to secure them in place so they don't come in and flood it. Now we've got tie wraps on in there. If you can see that, there is a better way of doing this though. There is some, you can buy barbs to go on the actual brass inserts themselves and you can solder them to them before you put them in. That's what I might do on the next one. And then you don't need to use tie wraps. What you do is you end up with a little, like these little teeth on here. So it's obviously coming off. What we're gonna do now, we're gonna stick some Velcro. We need to stick that in here so that holds your battery. So we're gonna stick a big bit down here to secure the battery in place. So we also need to do, we're gonna put a bit of Velcro up here as well. That hold the ESC onto that side and that allows the cell flight. So battery's on the left, ESC's on the left, flood chamber's on the left. So it should self right, perfect center of gravity for that. So we're gonna stick a bit of Velcro into here towards the back-ish to mount the ESC to that. Just like that. Right, yeah. So we have the ESC installed. So when you push it back there, not to keep the pipe for the water cooling in the back, because it sits all the way in the back there. So just push it in. It'll keep it nice and tight. So next we can stick the motor in. So the motor unit that we assembled earlier, it's basically the two pins line up. Push that in like that, and then it secures the AC nicely in place, actually. Okie dokie, we have the motor in place. I haven't done it up to look fully yet, so there's an M3x40 and an M3x20 down here. So that's just gently in there for now, until we get everything and then everything put in, and then I should do it up tight, and we should also get the cabling and all the tubes sorted out in a bit as well. So all we need to do now is get the impeller fitted, so that's on the shaft, and ready to go in. So we basically need to insert that on the opposite side. So I'm gonna feed that through all the way. And hopefully that should be in the uh, collet down there. So that's to insert a little bit of Loctite on here for the motor coupler. And then we have, because these are double ones as well, we've got one on the other side there as well. Look, so we'll get that out. Bit of thread lock and then that's done. Okay, so now the impeller's fitted, we can do the two main motor mounts up so they can be done now because everything else is in properly. So we'll just do the nip these up, they need to be tight. Sorted. Okay, so now that's done, we can fit the actual jet unit itself. So there is a bit in there, so you should be able to get it on there. Not gently turning it. There we go. So make sure it's the right way up as it is, and then we're gonna stick the four bolts in to secure that. And again, make sure guys, we don't do these up too tight, because remember, uh, it's only 3D printed, and you do not want to strip the nuts out. Okay guys, also you've got a nipple here, and there's one inside here. I'll show you that in a minute. So there's one here, and then you've got just in there. If you are using stainless steel bearings, that is where you grease it. So you stick a grease tube through there, and you grease the actual stainless steel bearings but because i'm using ceramics i don't need to do that they are more expensive they're so much more easier to use and you don't have to replace them either so next thing we need to do we need to get the steering fitted so i'll take my steering shaft feed it through here and then feed it through the seal being very careful so that is all the way so as long as you make sure that's at the bottom you know you're flat up here at the top in here so what we need to do now Need to get to the little screw that we put in earlier in there. You're gonna need an angled ball Allen key for this one. So get your uh, Allen key on there and then you're just gonna do it up. Not too tight, remember. Just to let basically that shaft doesn't pull out the back anymore. So we need to put the steering mechanism on now. And in the files you get loads. As you can see, they're numbered. You've got plus 25. This one is called backflip mode. So I'm wondering if it will backflip on 6S. And you've got zero. So the lesser the number, the more flat the actual boat will ride. And then I'm going to use 10 to start with. 10 will give it a slight pitch angle up. 
So the more numbers, the more angle the boat will ride at. So we basically plonk him on there like so. So what we'll do, we'll stick an M5 washer on there. And then an M5 nylock. And then we could do that up. Remember not to do it up too tight, leave it a tiny bit loose so the actual washer moves, otherwise it will be too tight and you won't get any steering. Okay, you can see that's now tight and I've left a little bit of movement in there. So we can test that, we'll get the servo fitted. Works well, absolutely fine look. What we can do now, we're gonna insert the grate. So you get two different ones as well. You get the intake grate and you get the normal one as well. So that will just plonk in that way. And then two screws in there. And then we can install the ride plate. We have all of the water cooling pipes. All we need to do now is just connect up the motor. So that's all the motor in. All we need to do now is put the receiver receiver box in and then we're done. Put the receiver box together. So we've got a few parts here. There is a smaller one than this now included with the kit. I'm just going to use a normal size. You've got radio box, you've got the lid. We need a bit of brass tubing, the mount, an M3 by eight. And also a couple of servo leads. So 100 mil extension lead. What we're gonna do, we're gonna put a bit of five minute epoxy on here. And then feed this through the lid, like so. And then the next one. And then also we're gonna put a bit of five minute epoxy on here as well on the brass tube. This is for the aerial. Push the aerial tube into here. And then just wait for that to go off. While that is curing, we are going to attach the base here. Threaded inserts into there, melted them in. M3 by 8 in the hole. So that is now cured. So that's fully waterproof as well, because the box is. So let's put a rubber seal. So rubber o-ring over the whole lot. There we go. So that's our rubber seal in there. What I'll do is I'll run a bit of Vaseline just to reinforce that. And what I've also done is a backup. I've written one on here. So this will be channel one, because obviously I won't be able to see that. And also I've done is put which side is minus, so we don't have to take it apart again. So a bit of tip X, either side and each one. So minus that side, minus that side. And channel one. So we're gonna go channel one into my nice spectrum receiver. Channel one into throttle. Then we're gonna feed the receiver, uh, the aerial through the tubing. Like so. And then we're going to try and get all this in the little box here. So we've got some Vaseline on there now. And I just need to try and get this inside this little box. Okay, I just need a couple of M2 bolts in there now. Don't have to be too long. All around there. Okie dokie, there we go. Receiver box is complete. So all I'm going to do now is stick some fuel tube on there to there. And then try and seal it up. And then we're good to go. Okie dokie then, so we've got the receiver box all ready to go in. So it does say you can do whatever you want. You can glue it in if you want. What I'm going to do is double-sided tape and I, I want it removable just in case. So we'll get that removed, put in there. Okay, nice and secure. Put the area inside so it's at the top. Okay, so it's all done now. All you need to do is obviously, all we need to do, plug it in and that's done. So that is the whole finished. Okay, these are the final pieces of the puzzle. So this is the top deck. So you've got your top deck, look at the engine, look. So pre-done the engine, this is all 3D printed in one go, look. How cool does that look? So, supercharger goes in there. Little butterfly valves open as well. Normally, there will be a rod in here and a connecting link. But with this one, we're not using it on this one. But the water pressure will come through here and it would open this up as it was going through the water. But because I printed it before it was released, the new release, has this supercharger in this. The old one didn't have it, so I've already used the bearing, obviously. So I have to get another bearing and reprint the jet nozzle so we can use that. So that'll come at a later date, probably in the actual run video itself. But that's the engine look, fully 3D printed in different on my Bamboo Lab. Looks absolutely wicked. And then we have the pilots look. That's all one print as well. All I need to do is paint their faces and their hands. And that'll be done. And then you've got your roll cage. And then we've got the supercharger we need to fit on the front of the engine. So let's get all that together then. So that's the supercharger belt fitted. 
pulleys and everything. So now we're gonna attach the engine to the actual cover itself. So some more M3 by 10s. So that is on there and complete. So now we need to put the drivers on. So two counter soap, all flat heads in there. So again, make sure you don't do them up too tight. So see these are hollow inside, depending on what infill you use, I've only used 15%. So not too tight. Righty ho, look, there we go. So there's two of these on each side as well. Again, the countersink uh, bolts, two there, two there. With the old boat, we had to seal this, remember? We had to put fuel tubing around here. With this one, it is different, look. It comes with a file with this. So this is TPU. This is a TPU flexible lid. This is the medium one. And it's absolutely perfect. And it's such a bonus as well. Nice and soft and the edges. It keeps it fully waterproof. So, let's suppose it goes on there, look. And then push it down into the edges. Easy peasy. Look at that. It's done. Sit your battery in, done. Put the lid on, off you go. Is then we can put the lid on, which slides in at the front, like so. So remember these we made earlier, look. And that's it. How cool is that? So all completed, ready for its first run. Everything's done. It's all wired in, programmed, calibrated and everything. Looks awesome. So what we did do, if we just turn it around, we have made it so the supercharger is ready. So all you have to do is install a little spring on here and then there's a water pipe that feeds this. So on this one, this is the, the one, the previous version, there is a hole under here normally. In the new one, the V1, there's a hole under here in the pump. We'll pump water straight through. But this one, I have to modify it. I have to print a new one of these, put a brass tube in there and then run the water cable through the back, create a hole up there directly into there. And what that will do, it will force the water through little spring, look, there is instructions for this. That'll open it and reclose it again. But that'll be for another video and we can do an upgrade on that. So yeah, all ready to go on the water. So supercharger and all, and I think it looks absolutely epic. Awesome, boat looks absolutely brilliant, and it's really nice to build as well. So I was wrong at the start of the video. Yes, yeah, so you'll get both. So I was wrong at the beginning of the video. So now you'll buy this one, 30 euros. This is the super sprint, and you'll also get the jet sprint as well. So you get two boats for the price of one, for the price of one, sorry. This one is a, a lot better. It's a much better upgrade than the previous one, but they're both still really good boats. This one, loads of mods come with this one as well. You can have different ride planes, different fins, you make your steer different, um, different angle of the nozzles, as we'll see in the video when I do it. But it's absolutely fantastic. Um, really good design. This one's come out absolutely fantastic. So I can't wait to get this out. So there will be a video coming soon of this one. And we're going to take Kev's one out as well, the one I printed of him. I'm going to put them on the water. So keep an eye out for that video as well. Um, yeah, so thanks a lot for watching everyone. Hope you like this sort of video. Uh, like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. So, uh, yeah, bye-bye now.